Council and uh, I want to welcome all of our other staff that are with us on online as well. Um, I want to thank uh, Mike and Paul and Carmen who are there from the tech team and from, from the division and DNR to help us out with uh, streaming and, and, and all of our other audio and technical needs. Really appreciate their help, but they've been working hard for not just our meetings, but for all of our racks and all of our other meetings as well. And, and uh, they do a great job. Um, also need to thank Daniel um, and Allison and Danny for helping organize all of the Habitat Council, um, you know, the logistics and the, the meetings and agendas and keeping the spreadsheets up to date and put together and understanding the budget and whatnot from the database. And so um, they, they, they are the ones who really uh, do all of this and uh, they do a great job. And so I really appreciate that. Um, just a couple of other things um, as we go through this, you know, the first thing on our, on our agenda really is to approve our minutes from the previous meeting. Um, it looks like um, about the only thing the only things that we'll be making motions on in this meeting are approving the minutes and approving the agenda um, for today. And we do have possibly one additional project that we'll do a quick review on and, and have a motion there. Um, but it looks like uh, other than that, those are probably about the only motions we'll be going through today, but we'll be discussing um, um, as I review this agenda, we'll be discussing the overall budget and our funding recommendations based on all of the work we've done over the past um, a few months. Uh, we'll take a break at around 10.30 and then uh, we'll finish out talking about those recommendations. Uh, we do have uh, a habitat management plan that uh, will, will be presented to us from the Southern region. Then we'll have the additional project that I mentioned and then we'll talk about um field tour dates uh and try to select a date and figure out how we can move ahead on on a field tour um and, and our options there so we'll, we'll be talking about that and then um we have it scheduled to end at noon we also block the time till one but let's we'll try to be done by noon and so um with that um um i would Ask for a motion to approve uh, the agenda for our meeting today. So moved. This is, a second. This is Tyler. Okay. okay. So we have um, a motion from Paul Burnett and a second from Tyler to um, approve the agenda. Um, everyone in favor say yes. 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 Okay. If there's any opposed, they can say no at this point. Okay. That motion carries. So, uh, Daniel, uh, you want to review or look at the minutes from our previous meeting? I know it went a little bit out of order, but you know, I think we're good. So. Okay. Um. Are there any remaining issues from our previous meeting that uh, we need to discuss and bring up? Uh, is uh, I mean, we'll, we will be talking about the overall budget, but um, are are there anything from our previous meeting that we need to discuss? Any items? Okay, I'll accept a motion to approve the minutes. This is Drew. I move to approve. The minutes. Thank you, Drew. I have a motion from Drew. Drew, is there a second? This is this Paul. Is second. Okay, we'll have a second from Paul. Thanks. Uh, everybody in favor, say yes. 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 You. If uh, you're opposed, say no. All right, the motion carries. I mean, typically, uh, when we're voting on projects, we'll go through a roll call. But um, when we're just doing minutes and and uh, agenda, we'll just do it all together, just fine. So, 
Um, okay, we have that part done. Um, before we move on to a budget discussion, uh, Danny's going to help us with that. Uh, did I miss anything, Daniel? Nope. You're good. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Uh, Danny, you have the mic. Okay. Um, I just wanted to help set the stage a little bit today um, and talk about the budget. And I, we, we usually get this uh, spreadsheet from our fiscal section about this time of year, a little bit before one of these last meetings and gives us an idea of the revenue that we have for this, for this program. Um, and is that zoomed in enough? Can everybody see that? So I wasn't going to go through every, everything line by line here, but uh, just kind of, it kind of helps me uh, just to kind of see the, uh, the nuts and bolts of how this works a little bit. Um, and this is all written in the code, but for, for each of the licenses, we sell a portion of it. It's either 475 or 350, depending on the type of license goes into the Habitat account. So this is a list of all, this is the calendar year 2019 um, list of all of, of the various types of licenses. And then um, we track which types of licenses they are, and that's where we get um, whether they go into the big game account or waterfowl up under or or the fish. So this is you know what uh, this is the the breakdown of of the revenue that we received uh, last year. So it was a total of about two point nine million dollars, which is about equal to our the appropriation that we can spend. Um, and then we've asked for the additional 400000 so we can spend uh, more so that we can spend into our bank account a little bit. So that's, that's kind of a sticky subject that we're, <laughs> is a little bit gray right now where, where we are, and I'll let Eric speak to that. But yeah, Danny, can you blow that up a little bit? I can hardly see those numbers. Can I what? Uh, can you enlarge that screen a little bit, like zoom yeah, up? absolutely. Thanks. that better? Yeah, that's better, thanks. Yeah, so uh, for for waterfowl, the um, this 55,000 is the amount that, that, that the licenses uh, contributed to the account and up and game about 114,000, but as per the, per the code, um, for waterfowl, the code says that uh, the, the waterfowl allocation will be I think is it seventy thousand, Daniel, or or four percent, whichever is higher. So uh, they it, waterfowl brought in fifty five thousand, but four percent is the is the higher amount. So so one hundred seventeen is what what we'll be dealing with for what we have in the spreadsheet for waterfowl and also for upland game. It, it it's it's uh, boosted up by the twelve percent, which is in the code of so that goes up to three hundred fifty thousand. And then the other big, big game and sport fish are, are broken out by the remaining percentages that they have. So, um, Danny, I, I have a question. Yeah. Um, how, how do you determine what share of the combination license is attributed to waterfowl or upland game as opposed to other things? In other words, where does um, 5,000 come from? How do you make that assessment? I'm, that's a, a question I would have to ask our fiscal section a little bit better about. I'm um, not 100% sure. But I'd have to get back to you. I don't know if Daniel, if you'd have a better answer on that one. I, I know that they, which licenses they, how they determine which one goes to where, but I could, I could find out a little bit more on that. Thank you. But generally speaking, that's kind of the overview of, of where where our revenue is coming from and then per the co by the code how how we're divvying it out between the different programs danny real quick yeah I, this is justin i'm speculating to answer jack's question 
but I know we do surveys all the time. We do upland game surveys, waterfowl surveys, big game surveys. And so I think when you buy a license and you're called and we say, did you hunt this? Did you hunt this? Based on those percentages, we can tease out which hunters participated in which activity with a combination license. That could be Does the 55,000 include a share of revenue from the swan tax and, and the sandhill crane tax? That's, that's another good question. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have a good answer for that. We'll find out and we'll get back to you. Okay, so um, that's kind of what we get from our fiscal section and kind of sets the stage of, of for where we are today and um, and what we're what we're working with. Um, just also over the past couple of weeks, um, as we've been working, um, if you've been looking at our spreadsheet, you may have noticed. It changed a couple times recently, and um, so we've been dealing with whether or not we have the extra four hundred thousand dollars this year with our current budget climate. And right now, uh, we've we're unsure, and so we've gone back to the the two point nine million. Um, so we'll start from there, and so I think we can um, try to allocate to that point, and then build a contingency list. And if we do get the additional uh, 400,000 and then we can add those those contingency items to the list um, we've also uh, with the waterfowl being the one that was the largest in the in the red we've been working to get uh, some more uh, Pittman Robertson dollars added a lot of those waterfowl most of our waterfowl management areas are are uh, eligible for Pittman Robertson and so what most of the time what we're doing is getting Using the Habitat Council as the as the match, 25% match for those dollars, and we had a couple, two or three programs that, or projects that weren't uh, originally asking for federal aid dollars, and so we've been able to get them added in, and, and that's reduced our our waterfowl need. So, um, and then I guess lastly, we've also kind of for waterfowl, we've We've looked at a few projects and the the percentages and try to make sure that they're accurate and and Daniel's put in the comments there a, a couple of them where we felt like we probably could have reduced the waterfowl number that they were maybe and that, so those those percentages are all pretty arbitrary and so that's a discussion that we could we could have today if there's others that we want to change or we don't want to change some of the ones that we're proposing and I think Daniel has those in yellow I'll let Daniel if you can you want to share the spreadsheet and that's kind of where we stand today maybe Eric if you want to speak to you probably have more insight on where we are with the extra 400,000 and and the overall budget state budgets I guess Yep. Okay. Thanks, Danny. I appreciate that rundown. And maybe while Daniel's spreadsheet is opening up here, um, I'll, I'll just mention that. So the monies that uh, Danny has presented, um, you know, those are license and permit dollars, and they go into what's called our restricted account, meaning that uh, that money is uh, um, is for use for um, sportsman wildlife related activities. Um, and technically the legislature can't pull that away from us like they, they can general fund monies. And so, um, Daniel, I'll let you kind of talk about what you've got going right there, or do you want me to finish talking about the overall budget picture first? Um, so maybe just to talk about the spreadsheet a little bit, um, we have all of the projects that have been submitted or presented through um, Habitat Council on this list. Um, right now is the 2.9, which is available. 
So it's totaling the different big game, upland game, waterfowl sections. This is what's been requested. And this is right now the difference between those. Um, so you can, as we jump over to the individual ones, you can see big game is right now 118. Upland game is a positive 57. Waterfowl is 65 in the red. And then sport fish is a positive 53. So that's kind of where that um, 74 is kind of a, a difference between all of those different categories. And this is based on the the 2.9 million, which is our 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 current base budget. This doesn't include the extra 400,000 that the legislature did approve, but they're they are currently telling us to um, hold off on allocating this money. But like I say, this is what's called a restricted account, and so they can't pull this money and use it for general fund purposes. Um, and, and so this this money is sitting in in uh habitat the habitat account in and um really can't be used for anything else and so it's a little weird to have them still tell us to hold off but they're just kind of generally saying you know you've got to hold off on on the spending and we don't have a green light on this but uh um the worst they could do is delay us and say you just can't spend this this year and and you'll have to ask for it again next year and so, um, but so a reminder, this is restricted money. So go ahead, Daniel. Um, I don't know if I have much more on the spreadsheet. Um, as you look at any of the total fundings over here, you can see the Habitat Council request column. This is what they're actually asking for. As we go through this discussion today, you know, we can change these amounts. We can also change the percentages to help each of the different categories come closer to uh, the available budget. Um, what's also showing here are uh, the different funding partners as well. This is Blue Ribbon, this is federal aid, PR dollars, and then this is any sportsman group or WRI funds uh, with the total amount over here. You guys should all have access to the spreadsheet. Um, but that's kind of what's on here. Um, hopefully you've all been through it, are familiar with it, and have played around and have come with maybe some ideas of how to balance some of the, the different budgets. Um, I On the waterfowl, Jack, I did highlight a few on here that we could potentially play around with. Um, so, we can have some of those conversations. I did change two of them. Um, this Logan conservation easement had some money in there, but the actual project didn't identify any waterfowl. There probably is some waterfowl benefit, but um, I moved that money over to uh, the sport fish program as there was a, an available balance there. Same way with this community fishery one here. There probably is a waterfowl benefit, but likely there's not going to be any hunting opportunity on a community fishery um, or waterfowl so i also moved that over to to support fish so those are a few of the changes that i did make on here to try to bring it in the other three that uh, danny kind of alluded to um, regarding uh, the pr dollars we asked for one was the kevin conway wma we asked for those through the enhancement and got that. And then the remaining balance that was here, uh, Sportsman for Fish and Wildlife ended up picking up that available balance. Um, then the two other ones that we requested additional uh, PR dollars for were Bicknell Bottom and the Clear Lake fence reconstruction. Um, so that reduced both of these amounts as well. Um, I do have a call in with SFW. They are looking at these projects and they may, uh, if they decide to contribute some funds, they may add some funds to those projects. The other one I'll just mention here, um, we do have what we call a fast track list out to all the different uh, regions right now, asking for any projects that they think that can be um, fast tracked in fiscal 20 versus 
this sheet, which is fiscal 21. Clear Lake was one of those projects that they said that they could fast track um, in fiscal 20. Um, so this could potentially just go away and we fund it in fiscal 20 and not have to fund it in fiscal 21 if we decide to make that call. And with that, Great, Eric, thanks, Daniel. I think that's all I got. Yeah, hey, Daniel. I think uh, Allison had something. Oh, go ahead, Jack. Yeah, I, oh, just, I, I just wanted to thank uh, uh, thank the division for all of its work on this and, and uh, for doing the best it can to try to accommodate needs within the budgetary constraints you have. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Allison, you want to jump in now? Yeah, I just wanted to point out a couple of my color coding things in this in the Habitat Council column. Um, there are uh, the light orange highlighted projects are projects that we could potentially change numbers on um, either because it was a low or medium ranked project and probably won't get additional funding. Um, or um and then there are a couple in the northeast region um that we had originally approved some funds for but then we thought it was fully funded with water development funds and sportsmen's those water development funds have been held back so we may need to add habitat council back into some of those that's a discussion that we probably should have today and then um there is one that I've got highlighted in a darker orange. It's the Northern Region Browse and Water Enhancement Project. Um, I know we had some discussions about that project um, when, as far as like what portions of the project was the council going to fund. Uh, the sportsman's groups did come back and fund all of the browse planting portion of the project. So. There's 42,000 left that needs to be funded, and that would be the water development portion of the project. So um, I know that there were some discussions when this was previously proposed that you guys would be interested in the browse section of that project. So that's what those highlighted column um, colors are in that. So as we go through today, um, we probably should address those projects specifically to decide you know, maybe those are ones we could put on the contingency list um, for if we get additional funding. Thanks, hey, everybody. This is, okay, so this is Paul. I just have oh, a quick question. Ahead, um, yes. So, Daniel, can you talk about the two projects again that you moved uh, water from or uh, funding from waterfowl to sport fish? It was the Logan River uh, conservation easement. Is that correct? And then what was the other one? It's the two hundred in yellow here, the community fishery oh. riparian one. Oh. Okay. All right. Both of them Thank I think you. had about ten percent uh of waterfowl dollars on there. And the proposals didn't really identify waterfowl. I think maybe in some of the discussion, maybe the presenter talked about it. Maybe that's why that was there. I can't recall off the top of my head, but um sport fish is probably a better place for, for both of those. Was, was kind of my thoughts. So yeah, I think that makes sense. I just wanted to make yeah, sure part, I was clear. Yeah. Part part of the reasoning behind that is yeah, there's probably some there could be some waterfowl habitat use in, in some of those areas, but those are not areas, especially like along the, you know, that end that stretch of the Logan River where where those that can be actively hunted for waterfowl. And so that's kind of why we pushed it more towards sport fish. Um but uh here's just another update. I just now received a message from the director's office to go ahead and uh, count that 400,000 is in the budget and that we will be spending that out. So not to throw a grenade on all this stuff and the numbers could will change a bunch, but uh, I, we just got, I just got the green light to, to uh, allocate the 400 extra 400,000 that was uh, given to us from the legislature. So there was that good news earlier. So now you got it. Um, 
so that'll change the spreadsheet up quite a bit. And I'm not sure, Allison, I mean, you originally had built this with that 400,000 being included, um, but we backed off of it based on direction from our director's office at the time, um, a couple, three weeks ago. Um, and I don't know, give me a feel for what it's gonna take for you to add that back in. Just give me a couple minutes and I'll get him, I'll get those numbers updated. <laughs> Isn't that's awesome? She's awesome. Um, I tell you, the, working with between Danny, Daniel, and Allison is just fantastic. They they do such a good job at, at working all this stuff out. Um, while she's so doing just that, a couple Eric, of other things. That we, what's that, Drew? I while while she's doing that, I I'm not sure uh, kind of how this this process is gonna is supposed to flow today, Eric. But uh, I did at some point. Uh, whether it's now or later, want to discuss uh, a meeting we had with with uh, Paul Burnett and Randy Opplinger, and uh, then you yesterday, and uh, how that would address or uh, adjust our priorities using Sportfish money here, and the ramifications that that would have for Blue Ribbon uh, funding on on a project here as well. So, uh, do you? Uh, yeah. Are we going to have that opportunity later? Is now an opportune time to, to start that discussion? Um, we will have that opportunity um, in a few. I, I think I'd rather finish up um, kind of the overall general budgetary scenario. And I've got a couple more points to make about that here. And then once we kind of get more into going through the, the overall uh, funding recommendation based on projects, I'd like to have that discussion here in, in a few, if that's okay. Perfect. Thanks, Eric. Um, but, but thank you for bringing that up because that that is a really big, important one that we need to discuss and and, um, and figure out how how to accommodate. And so, um, so while kind of Al, while Allison's kind of working on the spreadsheet here for a few more minutes, I do want to mention a couple of other things from a budgetary standpoint. Is is uh, specifically, um, you know, the question had been asked to us. Uh, I think Dwayne, you had you had you had asked uh, about uh, carryover money or money that essentially doesn't get spent out in a in a in a year. And as you see, the, the as Allison's working on this sheet, that the, a lot of the red numbers are going away, and so that means that there is additional funding there. And so, what what uh, what that means is the well the only the only number that's not going to go into the black is going to be the waterfowl number uh, and so we're still going to work on that one but um, um, but what what you all need to know is that this this is a restricted habitat account and when either we don't spend out money in this year or a project gets canceled and therefore the money doesn't get spent out in in the fiscal year it that money just reverts or, or stays in our habitat account but um we can use it later but in order to use it later we have to ask for a building block from the legislature to, to use that money again and so what's happened over the years is as projects have been canceled uh or you know or or they came in under budget um that money didn't get spent and so what's been happening is our habitat account has been growing uh, well past our normal appropriation uh, which has been 2.9 million up until this year, and it's now 3.3 million uh, because of the extra 400k. And so if we if we don't spend that money in this fiscal year, uh, we have to ask for it again. And so one of the questions that was asked to us, well, can we carry that money over into the next fiscal year? It it goes back to our main habitat account and kind of gets becomes unallocated money and um, we have to then ask for it again as an additional building block that was one of the reasons that we asked for the 400k so that we can start spending down all of this extra money that's been building for years in our habitat account to the tune of over over a million dollars in that account so we asked for the extra 400,000 of ongoing money so it'll burn down that account and so um, so what I what I'm suggesting here is that yes, the money carries over 
but it becomes as of July 1st, it becomes unusable until you get permission to use it again from the legislature, which is a which is a, a really difficult process. And so um, we need to do our best to try to allocate as much as we can during the current uh, uh, funding cycle and get it spent out um, because then it kind of goes lapses back into the overall habitat account and, and becomes um, it's not earmarked anymore for for projects and and, um, and goes to just build that overage. So um, so we have to look at this from the aspect of if it if the numbers if that number's in a block and isn't zero, that money is going to lapse back into the regular habitat account, and then we have to look to spend that as part of our allocation next year, or um, we have to ask for a building block from the legislature again, which again has to, from our standpoint, when we ask for that, that has to go through the governor's office first and then the legislature. And it's a very difficult process and often is not successful. So um, the fact that the legislature did appropriate to us this additional 400,000 this time of ongoing money is, is really a, a big deal. And let's just take that and run with it and try to spend out everything we can during the current, you know, this project cycle. And so that's kind of how we have to look at it. Is there any questions about that and how that works? Well, I'll just mention also that uh, part of the reason that bank account has grown is that our, our revenue has continued to grow every year. And so in recent years, the revenue wasn't wasn't equal to our appropriation. So we could we could spend more than we were bringing in and spend into that bank account a little bit. But now, actually, with this year, we got our revenue was at a new high of 2.9, which is right at the old old uh, appropriation. So, so it was hard to hard to spend into our account. And now, with the additional 400,000, we can spend down our account a little bit. And a couple of years ago, if you recall, we had an additional. They gave us an additional 1 million, or the ability to spend an additional 1 million to help spend that down a little bit. So now, now we can uh, try to keep spending it down, but it's a good, it's, that's about not a bad problem to have, to have more money coming in. So. So to, as I understand it though, if, if the hundred thousand dollars in Upland game money goes back into the fund, when it comes back in, it won't go to Upland game. It'll be divided by the percentages in the general habitat fund. So I would get 12% of that. Just say we don't spend it only 12% of that would really come back to me. To have it upland game. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So correct. yeah, you'll get twelve percent of the allocation. Yeah. Yep. So we need to do our best to look at this as we've got to spend out this money as much as we can during the current fiscal year based on the projects we have. And we're just we're just fortunate at this, you know, this year and, and I don't think we're gonna be able to I don't know, spend all this out this year. We're just, we're going to have to push some back into the account. And um, it, it, it helps us to look ahead at next year that we need to, you know, up our ante on projects. And, and uh, you know, um, I think this is where, you know, Dwayne and, and of course, Jack, the waterfowl account is still in the red, but <laughs> we'll figure out some stuff, but uh, where we need to look to, you know, uh, do our best to, to you know, meet this new allocation, which is is, is a really beneficial thing. Eric. And, uh, and so we'll look. Yeah, yeah I was, was going to say, I, I know where I we disagree with that. I think we could, I think we could spend that. We just need to increase the Habitat Council requests on some of those projects. Okay, Jack. Uh, yeah, I know where we can put forty nine thousand seventy three dollars on. <laughs> it's the amount that the waterfowl is currently in the world. Yeah, but remember on the on the, you, I mean, yes, we can we can re, we can keep readjusting numbers, which we'll look to do, uh, in in, um, that we do like for any any given. Thing like for waterfowl, we can't go over that four percent, and for upland game, we can't go over the twelve percent, and and then the rest gets divided between big game and sport fish. And so, Tyler, 
Yeah, I don't know that's true either. I think in the end, when we've tried to balance these, we've actually we've actually changed some of those percentages to help one column out or another. Because we've often, for years, Sportfish didn't bring enough projects, you know, and and Upland didn't bring enough projects. So we we've we've at the end of the year made changes to those percentages. Yeah, so we can make changes to um, the percentages within the within projects. I think that's what you're talking about, Tyler. Uh, we can't change the four percent and the twelve percent from by statute. So, but but you're right. We we can continue to adjust the percentages of w within projects that are allocated to, to certain uh, categories, so that that uh, more gets pushed over into waterfowl or or whatever. Right, so, right. Um, yeah, so I think we're on the same page there. And Okay, is one, there any other questions about I, this? Go ahead. Sorry. Um, one other thing, too, to think about um, for that 49,000, you know, if we fast track that Clear Lake project, that will reduce that amount by 11,000. And then we've also, Sports and um, SFW is considering a few other projects that would also bring that number down if they agree to to fund those as well. So that is another moving part that might um, still play a factor in that waterfall number. And just to maybe further explain that, the fast track is just as we're getting close to the end of this current fiscal year and we know about projects that either came in under budget or were canceled or pro postponed for whatever reason, we're trying to spend this year's money right away with projects that have the ability to get them done right away. So I think, you know, this kind of gets complex as you get more into it. And so there's there's three different types of percentages here. There's the statutory percentages, which are the 12% the upland and the 4% waterfowl. Then we have the percentages within just the Habitat Council uh, monies of projects and then that we're looking at here um, but then there's the other percentages that are the wri percentages and that's i think that's also what tyler's been talking about where we can up the amount of habitat council percentage that is contributed to an overall project that's in the w wri system uh, and to, to help spend out that money on those projects so we just pump more of the money from habitat council into, into those which probably would be a really good thing to do um, because uh, WRI, and Tyler, you can speak to this, WRI is, is being, uh, some of the other funding sources are being cut. Maybe you can speak to that for a minute, Tyler. Yeah, yeah, we're seeing, you know, quite a bit of cuts actually. Um, the, the cut list came out yesterday, at least the initial cut list came out yesterday and um, the shared stewardship, $1.5 million, that entire, amount is getting cut um and then once the legislature goes back into session they'll consider up to a 10 percent cut for existing general fund budget so our general fund budget might get cut as well and it's likely the the division of wildlife general fund budget will be cut more than that 10 percent because we have other monies like restricted and pr access and things like that so but we're not very reliant on general fund money in the first place, so it shouldn't be too too bad for us. Okay, is there any other questions about the spreadsheet and kind of the budgeting process and, and kind of where we're going with this? And Tyler, the, the water development money, that was that's not ours, but that might affect some projects that we have, right? That yeah, was that's true. Taken as well. Yeah. Yeah, so there's there's two big funding hits on WRI that uh, um, is getting pulled back. Um, but Habitat Council, because this is restricted money, allows us to fill in a little bit more um, where some of those other funds are, are being cut back. So, okay, last call for questions about the spreadsheet and the budget before we move on to, I guess, more of the overall funding recommendations and the contingency list. Okay, 
uh, before we move on, just, you know, thanks everybody for working with us on this. We're trying to juggle these numbers to make create maximum benefit for the projects that we've reviewed and um, create maximum benefit and stretch our Habitat Council dollars as far as they'll go and match them with the most amounts of money of other funding that we have, like PR. Um, we've had lots of side meetings about this, you know, that others have participated in here on this call um, about various projects and, and things going on. And I just really appreciate everybody's efforts, um, you know, especially with Allison and Daniel and Danny wrangling a lot of these things. And so it, it, it's a it's quite a process. And and these these guys do a great job. And, and you know, you you all need to know that. We're working really hard to to maximize benefit from these dollars for these sportsman dollars for these projects and and i think uh moving ahead especially for uh you know upland game and 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 waterfowl you know let's let's uh you know and Dwayne, maybe this is more geared towards you you know we talked you've talked about you know other upland projects you you now have a there's a new division upland coordinator with with Heather Talley, and we're working with her to kind of bring her up to speed on how all of this works, and and we can work to um, uh, have additional work with our biologists in the regions to have additional upland focused projects as well. So, um, and, and we can do that for all all of the categories here. But um, okay, we're gonna kind of wrap up this part of the discussion and move on. Unless there's any final questions about it, um, just a comment. Unfortunately, I need to uh, step into the other meeting. Uh, I don't know if it's possible for me to simultaneously attend this meeting and the Zoom meeting, but uh, um, in any event, I apologize for the fact that I have to leave. But it's kind of a critical thing I've got to do here. So, no problem. Thanks, Jack, for being with us, and we appreciate your efforts here. And we'll be in contact as things move ahead and as we you know finalize funding okay thanks again for all your help yeah thanks jack okay we're going to move on to the next part funding recommendations and contingency list daniel is that you you want to start that discussion um so with the new numbers now i mean probably really what we need to do is is go through and and make each of these different categories probably, you know, adding some funds, as Tyler mentioned, to the Habitat Council request um, to try to bring these numbers more closer to uh, to zero. Um, I think for the waterfowl right now, I'm feeling kind of comfortable with this number. I think this number is going to change. So I don't know that we need to probably tweak waterfowl too much. Um, I think those numbers are going to just kind of change on their own. Um, so, yeah, I think the the thing now to do would be to go so, through each of these different categories and, and um, those down. Some of them are obviously joint percentages. So, you know, as we change stuff, it'll change different numbers. But um, probably just pick one of the categories and, and start going through them. Okay, I'm going to propose that we start with sport fish uh, because Drew had mentioned, you know, we had we've had some meetings and there's one project here that is kind of in a deficit uh, that we we need to discuss. It's a pretty big deal. And um, Drew, is this a good time to, to bring this up now? And, and I'm thinking it is. And we need to kind of go over this. If you want to give us the the overview of what we're talking about with the Provo River. Sure. I'll, I'll start uh, just talking about the, the concept and kind of give a background for the, the meetings we've had. So as you know, we, we, uh, we have a, 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 another committee or council, the Blue Ribbon Fisheries Council, who also funds projects. And uh, so we try and balance uh, you know, things that are eligible for that, that program and things that are eligible for Habitat Council. And, and uh, there's a project on here, the Lower Provo River in-stream flow that's, that's uh, I believe, jointly funded uh, between the two. And uh, it's, a, it's a big chunk to take out of, out of Blue Ribbon, and it, it eliminates or reduces our effectiveness in, in funding other projects when we, when we did that. 
So we met with uh, Paul Burnett and we met with uh, Randy Opplinger, our Blue Ribbon Fisheries guru, and uh, just kind of discussed how we uh, get the most out of our Blue Ribbon Fisheries budget. And then, you know, how do we get this, this uh, in-stream flow done and what, uh, what, uh, what we would need to assure ourselves that this isn't a, just a 10 year fix that we're actually uh, looking for uh, permanent uh, ways to address the in-stream flows in that, in that section of the Provo river. And so uh, I, I'd like Paul Burnett to kind of take the lead on, on what this would look like and, and what those uh, recommendations would be uh, if we, if we approved this funding for the lower Provo uh, using using uh, Habitat Council funds. So, uh, Paul, did I give you enough uh, background to, to take lead on the discussion? Yeah, I think so. I, I think, um, you know, the conversation we had uh, earlier this week um, uh, sparked um, also a conversation uh, amongst the the project proponents. I, I talked to Chris Crockett on Wednesday, and he's, put, he's uh, putting together – uh, kind of a, a long-term plan on how to deal with, um, uh, you know, developing more a more of a permanent solution. This really just buys us time um, to to do that. Um, I, it, it is a high-cost project, but at the same time, um, you know, this reach of the Provo is so heavily fished that, um, it, and and the fact that it's such a high visibility area. Um, it really speaks to the to the need to come up with a one a short term solution, which is a which is basically an interference agreement, uh, and then uh, through that agreement uh, develop uh, some longer term solutions. And and so we kind of have a kind of have the beginnings of a list um, of of uh, how we want to how we want to move forward with that. One one of the things that uh, I think we're going to do um, is is develop a a um, I guess a, a water flow committee um, for this reach of the Provo. And I think there's actually a couple other um, flow committees in the Provo. So I think what we really want to do is get everybody co in talking to each other in the same, uh, in the same room and, and kind of look more holistically at flows in the Provo and how we're going to be able to uh, deal with not only pro uh, flows for the, the sport fish, but also for uh, June sucker downstream from here. So, um, so there's a couple of there's a couple of uh, options at this point that we're looking at. Uh, one is the mitigation commit commission has some some water that's available uh, that we'd have to they would they could potentially quote unquote rent to uh, the Central Utah uh, uh, Water Conservancy District, um, and then. Uh, looking at other solutions such as coordinating with the, the June sucker um, uh, program, as well as uh, hopefully getting into uh, a water banking uh, solution as well. So I think there's a bunch of different solutions that we can look at. Um, this, this lease again, just buys us the time um, and, and keeps that fishery alive uh, while we can come up with these more permanent solutions. So I think what we're looking at with this is, is that we've originally committed from uh, um, Habitat Council 219,000. And I think the total amount of the project uh, was 468, I think. Drew, is that, or Paul, does that sound right? 438. That's correct. 438, 438 um, yeah. And actually, I, I, I received an email from Randy Opplinger uh, yesterday indicating that that uh, um, Blue Ribbon wasn't going to be able to fund any of it actually and they, and they wanted to allocate all of their needed to allocate their money to other projects and so we're looking to figure out how to how to um, fill in the gap on this one and, uh, and and it is it is kind of a higher cost project but based on a year by year um, you know basis it, it it, uh, it's a pretty good deal, I think. Um, and to kind of what we'd like to do in order, because we need uh, we need to move, at least from a Blue Ribbon's perspective, uh, moving 
that allocation that is now for Blue Ribbon to Habitat Council uh, allows us to balance the budget in Blue Ribbon as well. And uh, honestly, uh, there's no better habitat for fish than water. <laughs> so this is this is crucial and it's a priority for the Division of Wildlife. It's a priority for our, our Wildlife Action Plan. Uh, it's something that, that is probably 20 years past due and I'm glad we're addressing it. It's just, you know, we also, one of the things that Paul brought up is critical to this discussion and that is uh, giving us some time so we can put a permanent uh, fix on this issue in the Provo River. And uh, just to add to that, sorry, I, I didn't mention that um, you know, one of the things that we're really going to focus on is um, is really tying stream flow to, to temperature in this reach and, and really get a good picture of um, in terms of, you know, long term, what are we really looking for for flow and what do we really need and what is what is, um, you know, what's going to be our target uh, maybe over, you know, a several year period so that we can figure out how to meet those flows and, and also figure out if the, you know, the 14 CFS that we, are, that we get in this reach is, is sufficient to maintain that fishery or if we need more or, or less. So that's, that's going to be a big component of that, um, that, that we've committed to, to uh, doing um, through the, the funding that we're getting from the private, uh, private source as well. Great. Drew, and, um, Drew, Drew this is Tyler. Was there anything else that's in, that's in that Blue Ribbon column that we've got assigned to Blue Ribbon right now besides that Lower Provo River that they did not fund that we also need to look at? No, I don't believe so. Okay. That's good. Okay, so we'll, we'll and with the with the update, and so I, I guess I need to mention really quick, Allison uh, finished updating the spreadsheet already with adding in the, the additional 400,000. She's awesome, to, you know, to be able to do that that quickly and have it all come out correctly is just fantastic. So, um, uh, Daniel, if you pan over a little bit and kind of look at the sport fish uh, allocation, there's, there's still quite a bit of money. Um, you know that we're in the block there that we can still pull from and so we'll look at to figure out how to how to make this work and and uh if, if for some reason we can't meet that full amount out of habitat council i know part of one of the discussions that chris crockett had had with rocky mountain powers is uh is you know he had, had sort of negotiated kind of a yearly payment it'd be good if we could just pay it all now and be and be done but if we can't quite get there Maybe what we do is we pay what we can, and then, uh, you know, we're so we spend out these Habitat Council funds now because like we don't want them to go back into the the main Habitat account. Um, and then maybe the negotiation from Chris with Rocky Mountain Power is continue with a, a much smaller yearly payment. Most of it's paid through Habitat Council, but then there there will be additional payments over the years from maybe some of the other sources of funding um, to go towards this. So yeah. And one of the things that um, Chris has mentioned is potentially um, just running a three-way agreement between us and the Central Utah, between TU and the Central Utah and the Division of Wildlife, and um, and running the money through us so we can we can bill for the full amount and then pay if they need to do uh, yearly payments. We can we can do that as well. I think there's a couple of good good solutions that we can come up with uh, to help out with that. Okay. Great. All right, um, Daniel, let, let's move on from, from that project. Sorry, we kind of jumped that in front of everything else, but uh, um, where do you want to start with uh, the rest of the list? Do we want to make those changes though, Eric, to the lower Provo right now? Yeah, let's make the change. Yeah. Like I say, I'm not exactly sure how far you want to go on that change for now or how much of that money you want to allocate? I think we decided to do the whole 219 uh, to, at least to start with. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that that'll put us in the ballpark. Okay. 
Okay. So you want to move the full amount, right? Or are you saying only start with 219? I think we're saying the full amount. Yes, I'm I'm sorry. I'm trying to get kids set up for school. <laughs> um, yes, uh, the 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 full 219 from Blue Ribbon over to Habitat. So the the total blue uh, total Habitat Council amount would be 438. Wow, it sure helped to have get the go the go ahead for that extra 400k. So awesome. All right, Daniel, next. Let's let's finish up the twenty thousand there for uh, sport fish. Where do we want that remaining amount to go? I've got some suggestions. If Drew doesn't have any, <clears throat> I don't. I would just increase the helper helper river revitalization project. Um, to take care of the rest of that, fifty-three, fifty-seven. Yeah, I think that makes sense. That's uh, that would work for me. That works for me too, Tyler. I think that's a great idea, Tyler. Good eyes. Great. Um, yeah, slide over one more and see where we're at. 314 bucks. All right. You probably could allocate that somewhere too. Um, I don't know. Tyler likes to, it's kind of like an airline over, over allocate the seats on the plane a little bit. Cause you know, some are going to bail out and I don't know, Daniel, what's your comfort level of, of trying to push that up a little bit higher over the 314 that we've got left sitting there. I mean, if we just want to leave it, that's fine with me um, for now, so. Okay. Do you want to know where my comfort level would be, Eric? <laughs> <laughs> I already know your comfort level. <laughs> Over our comfort level, so <laughs> go ahead and tell us, but I'll tell you no. <laughs> I'd say 25% over on everything. Yeah, that's probably a bit more than we're comfortable with. <laughs> So I, I would be okay with 10 or 15% though. Um, are there other projects, Paul and Drew, that you would want to allocate additional money in case other, other projects bail on, on their current allocation? I'm I'm well, not saying anything because I'm looking through the list here real fast. And I I I don't, uh, Eric, unless Paul sees something. I mean the 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 only other thought I had is that it, you know I don't know if we'd want to move um, some blue ribbon or some blue ribbon funding uh, off of some of these projects that are jointly funded and move more um, from Habitat Council onto those. Um, because there's a lot of there's a lot of projects that are jointly proposed that we could we could do that. That's a that's a good point, Paul. Uh, so my my thought and my agreement would be in the in the budget uncertainty that we're in. Uh, that would be very meaningful for the aquatic section and Blue Ribbon to to kind of. Uh, you know, have some additional money, a cushion in, in the Blue Ribbon Fisheries program moving into this next year. We'll call it the cushion cushion. <laughs> I like that. That's that's a that's a good coin. Good. Sorry. Um, Eric, and we, we don't have to make all of these decisions categories. right now. What was that, Daniel? I was just gonna say, as we go through some of the other categories, this number may change based on your know, percentages. So um, you could leave it for now and then and come back um, once we work with maybe some of the other ones and see where this number ends back up at. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do that. Yeah, we don't have to make all of these decisions right now. We'll continue to fine tune 
uh, where we're at with this. Um, but let let's yeah let's switch to one of the other major categories, um, and, and kind of see where we go with that. And like I say, these these percentages can continue to to be adjusted both both on our you know our Habitat Council uh, you know our project based percentages. But then, like I say, we'll probably be looking to pick up the slack on some of the WRI percentages because uh, they're losing chunks of chunks and chunks of funding. So. Um, I don't know which category do you want to go to next. Uh, maybe since Justin, you might have to jump off early. Big game. Do you want to do you want to look at that one next? Yeah, sure. That'd be fine. So it looks like you're in the black about forty three thousand that we can allocate additional money to. Is there anything specific? And and like I said, Justin, you can speak up or Darren as well, um, you know, or anybody uh, yeah. they would like to look at again. You know, just thought th this is an interesting discussion because typically we're trying to cut and now we're trying to add. And so it's it's kind of fun. Well, but um, I would say and during the time when, when everybody else is trying to cut, we're trying to add. So it's, yeah, it's crazy. I know that a lot of the projects that Jim Lamb had um, had huge price tags on them. And I, I think those are really important down there on the boulder and some of those areas. That, that's probably some of the stuff I'd like to look at first. I don't know how Darren feels, but um, that, that would probably be my preference is to look at some of those. Hey, Justin, this is Dar <clears throat> Darren, excuse me. I, I'm kind of flying through this blind because my computer crashed, but um, if I'm missing out on something, Justin, will you, will you let me know? It's it's hard to see the spreadsheet on my phone. Yeah, Darren, we just doubled funding on a project up in the UNOS, uh in a high meadow. So I hope you're cool with that. <laughs> uh, my bullet pressure went up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> just kidding. Let's focus on Jim Rowe. Um, there's so, also Darren, I just want to point out. Go ahead. There's a few of those water development projects. I don't know if you want to take a look at any of those that in, may need some additional funding on them. Um, that Northern Region Browse or um, what was the other one? Um, the book list ones that uh, Pat had, those are some other ones that, you know, we lost that water development funds. I don't know if that's a place you want to look at putting some of those funds as well. For, from my the perspective, I do like the idea. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Danny. Sorry. I don't, just the one that we were going to hear later from Kendall uh, wasn't going to need any money because um, it had uh, some gift funds, but I think he might need that. But we that's also, that's one complicated. We might be able to fast track that one as well. So yeah, that's, yeah. filling some holes like that might be a good place to look. That'd be great. I, I love the water projects that they're doing on the book cliffs. And one of the things that that I, I really appreciate Drew for bringing up in previous meetings is the maintenance. And I've been to several of those guzzlers out there and I, and I just like how low maintenance they are. And so if water um, funding is more tenuous, we, we could certainly add some there. And uh, in addition to some of that stuff on the boulders, if, if that boulder stuff is needed. Just to give you some other yeah, so I think. Go ahead, Allison. On that Book Cliffs East Water Water Developments Project 5363, it will need an additional ninety thousand dollars. That was what they had been awarded through Water Development. Um, so to make that project whole, it would need ninety thousand dollars. And then on <clears throat> the other project, 5376 Book Cliffs West Water Developments and Spike Treatment. Um, to make that project whole, it would need another uh, $92,860. Um, where would that put so us? You see the, if we were to fund something like that. Here. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Eric. No, well, I was just going to point out, you can see that there's, because of these other funds that are, are not going to be coming through like we'd planned, you know, there's create some 
significant gaps here. And so, yeah, just between Justin and Darren, if you can help us prioritize uh, where you you want want us to put these, then that'll be great. Um, let's tentatively fill them in and see what it looks like. Oh, there you go. That and like I say, I think I'm okay if we over allocate here, you know, near 15%. Are all those, maybe there's a question for Tyler. Tyler, through WRI, um, were all those projects down there on the boulders, were those pretty much taken care of? No. No. The request to Habitat Council on, on all of those high dollar projects is usually pretty minimal. Like you said, we usually have the opposite problem this time of year, so. We're usually pretty conservative with what number we put in there request-wise. But I guess my question is, is even though it's minimal, they're, they're fully funded through other other uh, mechanisms or not through WRI? Not yet. Not WRI yet. hasn't, we haven't had our cleanup meeting yet. We'll have that at the end of the month. Yeah. But th those would be the only other ones that I would like high priority, not the only ones I'd want to, but higher priority for me to, to, to try to fund those. Darren, how do you feel about that? No, I think that's a great idea, Justin. Uh, sorry, I'll mute for a minute. Uh, where we've got the cooperation of the Forest Service, I'd, I'd like to see those those funded. So I, I I would agree 100%. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, they're huge projects, um, and they're going to have other funding sources. I mean, if we added another ten to 20000 on on each of those, that kind of puts us at a... I don't know, 10% over. Is everybody comfortable with that? I'm good with that. Justin, will you just confirm with me which projects we're talking about? Thousand Lakes, the Government Creek? Um, let's see, what was the... Hold on, I thought it was, let me pull it up real quick. Is anybody on from the southern region? Yeah, I'm here. It would be Thousand Lakes, Last Chance, and Government Creek. They're all right there together on the screen with South Beaver in between them. Okay. Thanks for jumping in at the right time, Gary. Yeah, I mean, if we just added 10,000 to each, that puts us 10% 10, 10 over. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. What do you mean it puts us 10% over? Well, we're allocating, um, we're $150,000 in the red, and we have uh, okay, 1.2 gotcha. million to... To play with. So. Yeah, I think that's good where we're at. So, okay, anything else on big game then for now? I mean, I got one more project I'd suggest. That's Indian Peaks. But I guess it comes down to how comfortable you are pushing that 150 further. You did say 10 to 15%. Tyler, have we, we ever, have we ever gotten over, over allocating? No, but I've been pushing for it for 10 years. <laughs> You've been pushing for us to get in trouble? <laughs> to go over allocating. <laughs> We've never, I've over allocated in WRI for the entire life of the initiative and never gotten in trouble. People don't <laughs> spend the money they ask for, plain and simple. 
You use past history to help us inform this decision, Tyler. Yeah. Ask Daniel where we're at spending wise on Habitat Council right now. <laughs> we're just over you, a million. You mean for the current year, right? So you hear that? We're at a million dollars spending from last year's 2.9 allocated with a month and a half to go. Yeah, but everybody procrastinates. Those bills will be coming in. Some of those yeah. bills. If we don't spend that out, then that's going to get dumped back into that account that, I don't know, try to spend it down. But Daniel? Yeah, I mean, the only other thing to maybe consider in this conversation is, you know, the carryover request this year, you know, with the COVID stuff, I anticipate that we'll probably have a higher request and carryover from fiscal 20 to 21. And so as we look to approve those, that kind of starts to play into this number as well. I do like the Indian Peaks project, but that was the one that, uh, uh, that Kevin helped present. Is that the right one? Yeah. Yeah, I spent a bunch of time up there. That's that's a good one. I mean, I, I would suggest doubling that to eighty thousand. <laughs> okay, we can do that, but then I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tyler. How much are we over there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. If 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 we get burned on this, I'm sending Robin to Tyler and Justin. Send her over. Okay. <laughs> to Tyler. All right. So we're at 1023. We've talked about um, sport fish and big game. Um, we have on the agenda. Take a break here right away. So let's let's do that for five minutes and, and come back and, and knock out Upland and, and, and then look at kind of the waterfowl for one last time. And, and then we can look at doing our, um, looking at our uh, habitat management plan and the other projects. So let's take a break for five minutes and we'll be back.
Okay, we'll give everybody one more minute to come back on and then we will be ready to roll. One more minute. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and get going again here. Um, I think we're going to move our discussion over to uh, Upland Game at this point. And uh, see, Dwayne, you're on. And um, kind of wish I had Heather on today um, as well. Um, I don't know. Daniel, do you want to start that, or anybody can jump in and see where they want to look to make some adjustments? I don't know, Dwayne, maybe you can jump in first and give us your thoughts. I made two on just a couple of things. It's not going to change a lot of money, but on the uh, 5382 Upland Pavant WMA, it could be 100% Upland game, but that's only really a couple thousand dollars. And then on the um, which one is this now? I have another one here that doesn't want to show me which one I made the note on. So we can move some money on another one. The upland game. I don't know, can't see which one it highlights. But anyway, we can make a few moves like that. And then I was wondering, like in the Northeast I, region, some of the PATH projects, if they could use additional funding since PATH's on. I've got some sage grouse type moves to make too, if we need. Pat, do you, are you uh, able to speak to anything in the Northeast, Northeast region right now? Um, I think is the Stewart Lake project on there. Yeah. Uh, the both of those Stewart Lake projects would are good up on game projects. Uh, Dwayne's been on their property quite a bit, and then the. Kevin Conway as well. Uh, we visited at that property. So um, those three. Um, and Montez, Kevin Conway is more of a waterfowl, but uh, I'm, the Montez project, 5203, how's that one looking? 5203. That's a really good project at Montez Creek. Dwayne, we visited out there several years ago with, with yeah. Charlie, and uh, this, this is a really good one, I think. Yeah, that, that looks good. And if we if we can, if you guys are okay with helping out on the Kevin Conway one, that I think that helps out waterfowl a little bit on that too. Not well, that's our goal here, but. Kevin, Kevin Conway, Conway is right now fully funded. Okay, sorry. So it doesn't need any more funding on that one. The other three projects that you mentioned are also fully funded um, by Habitat Council already. Well, let's just. Uh, well, yeah, I think that's it. Then that's uh, really that sounds good. You could make an adjustment to the Stewart Lake percentages um, and Mon is 
it was right all the side. No, there's two people double in. Yeah, we can just on the Stewart Lake WMA Uplands renovation. Let's just make it a hundred percent Upland game. Changes it a little, helps out the track a little. What are your sagebrush, sage grouse ideas, Tyler? Um, Allison, the West Strawberry Sagebrush Treatment Project 5002 in the central region. Did it need more funding since it was a medium rank or did the sportsman's group pick it up? No, it needs more funding. It needs 34594 So I would suggest increasing the Habitat Council request to fill that. Pick up the WRI dollars. And then I would probably change the 50-50 to something like 80-20 with 20% being big game, so we don't push the big game number. Then the next one I was thinking was North Sheep Rock, just two down from there. I would suggest doubling that to 40,000 and then flipping the 70-30 big game, upland game. That's a big sage grass project. Did you say add money to it? Yeah, so change it from 20,000 to 40,000. And then change big game to 30% and up one to 70%. Is there anybody on from the central region? Yes, I'm, I'm here, Mark Farmer. Hey, Mark, are there really quail there? It's listed as a species. In the uh, North Sheep Rocks? Yeah. I believe so. Okay. And then the last one that's probably a stretch that I need a lot of help on is Parley's Canyon. Maybe Mark or someone from the central region can talk up the benefits to Upland Game for that project. <laughs> Raleigh Canyon? <laughs> like turkeys, maybe? You said Raleigh or Parley's? Parley's. Parley's. 51-22. I think Robbie's not on the call. He's on his way out to the west. Um, well, there's a lot of forest grouse that are going to be benefiting and probably some wild turkey. Otherwise, you're talking weed control, um, some timber work. That's an aspen, some aspen work and conifer removal. So, you know, those kinds of upland game species would benefit. Mostly grouse, near forest grouse. Forest grouse. So I would suggest with that one, bumping that up to 60,000 and flipping the big game upland game. Is this the one that involves the, the housing development at the top of the canyon? Yeah. I don't like this project at all. Well, that's, that's part of it, but that's <laughs> a small part of it. Yeah, it's well, a huge, it's like a million dollar project and that's that's a small that's, part of it. Yeah. That's a good sized part of it, yeah. This, this project also includes um, quite, a, quite a few BDAs and in places, where there are cutthroat trout, uh, including East Canyon and Toll Creek. I'm not sure about the Parley side, but I know on the East Canyon side, there's definitely a, a trout benefit or a fishery benefit. So it might be worth it to put, you know, a percentage of sport fish in there as well. I don't know what percentage, but <laughs> 10 works. 
and I think you're yeah, you're gonna pull that big game down too. Yep. All right. Yeah, I, I we can we can look at that for now. I, I kind of agree with Dwayne. I'm I don't like that one as as well. But uh, um, you know, what else, what other projects do we want to look at too? All my other projects are such small percentages of the of the overall deal that it's hard to to really make any big changes. Well, you can flip percentages like I'm doing. Yeah. I mean, I might open it up to the regions and just let let folks speak up for a good, you know, a good sage grouse project that I missed. I, I've got a question for Allison real quick. Allison, we've, we've changed percentages. Has that big game number gone down? I thought we were at 100, 191,000 in the red before we started, and then we played with percentages, and that really hasn't changed. Is that updating? Yeah, it's updating. So how have we, how have we taken money out of big game, but that, that number hasn't changed? It's been uh, we've increased the total amount of asks, so like we've asked for more money, but but then changed. Oh, wait, I see. We've just asked for. Okay, my bad. Yeah. Um, Makita, I don't know if you're able to jump on and and speak to any of the southeast region projects that you might want to look to bump. Yeah, I'm on. Sorry, I was working on a map and I, I didn't catch what you wanted. I heard sage grass last, but now I'm lost. <laughs> no, we're just yeah looking to you know push any extra funds in in other regional projects. Is there any specific thing from the southeast region that you might be interested in pumping a little extra money into from a upland standpoint? You got this southeastern Utah sage Russian shrub planting. Uh huh. So, I mean, that one will have some benefits to Gunnison sage grouse. Those are more of a non game species. Um, but, yeah, other than that, there's probably not benefits to, to upland game really with that project. Okay. We need some yeah. habitat projects for Upland Game next year. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing anything else right away, Eric. <clears throat> okay, thanks. Um, maybe I'll ask. Uh, I know Scott Walker from Northern Region had to jump off the call. Is there anybody else? I don't think there's anybody else from Northern Region on. Um, Gary, doesn't you want to jump on and, and yeah, I, I, all three of those Boulder Mountain projects we talked about earlier, the Government Creek, Thousand Lake, and Last Chance, all have really good sage grouse benefits as well. And specifically, Government Creek is on the the side of the boundary that's in the huntable population, so that would be a, a good fit. To, I don't know if you want to throw more money at that, but. It's definitely a, a good sage grouse project and a huntable population of sage grouse. One other thing to look at in southern region is this Henryville Creek project. We've got two thousand dollars on it. Um, it needs another fifty thousand at its low ranked. Um, so we either need to add more money or prep or take that money off. Which one was that? The uh, 5250 Henryville Creek Riparian Invasive Species Restoration. It's got a little bit of upland on it.
going to be a good project in a good area, but uh, definitely it's the first one for that area and it, it could be kicked down the road a little further and be planned out better into the future. So let's just pull the 2000 in. <clears throat> yeah, just zero that one out and uh, push it somewhere else. So now I'm just $135 off. Yeah, but we like, got to push you to 15% over, remember? Yeah, yeah. 10 to 15%, Tyler. 10 to 15%. It doesn't have to be 15. <laughs> I, I like Gary's suggestion about um, some of those other that have Huntival sage grouse populations. I, I think that makes sense. I would put as much as you can on government because I think government Creek is right on the edge of whether or not WRI can fund it. I agree with that. This is Darren West. Um, and also, is there any way we can wiggle around with the, the percentages of what species is going to be affected there? Absolutely. Sounds like it's Highly beneficial to sage grouse, though. I'm just kind of curious. So, do we want to add ten thousand to that total and switch the percentage to, I don't know, eighty big game and twenty epilim, maybe? Dude, I'd add like thirty thousand to it. Tyler, how much does it need? <laughs> it needs what, Allison? This one is one of our most important ones. We need to put a funding package together one way or another. So the total ask on this one is 191, 195. Um, we've got, let me tell you how much sports money, hang on. It needs 138 more. According to the master spreadsheet I, yeah got 53,000 from sportsman yes I would so, I would even I, I, I mean the Northeast region guys probably don't want to hear this but I would even consider pulling some of the money out of that water development and maybe funding one of those and funding this I, I think when we put Jim lamb down there and and said hey go get aggressive on this. I think it's really important that we fund these projects. And so, um, Justin, I'm going to back you up on that. I'm actually, I'm actually ready to go even further and Pat's not going to like this, but I would, I would probably cancel those two projects of his completely without that water development money. I think that money will come back next year. Is, is it one where we could split the difference and, and fund one of theirs and then give the other 90,000 to this to give it started enough? Or, or tie it? What are you doing to me, Tyler? Yeah, that'd be good. I'd be good with that too. Okay. Maybe Pat can tell us which one's his favorite one. Well, they're both my favorite, Tyler. Uh, I guess, <laughs> you know, not, not that these projects are more important than anyone else, but just to remind everyone, this, these were kind of a product of a request from the Wildlife Board from our region to, to step it up in the book cliffs and really address some of these issues. So um, I would like to at least get one of these fully funded. And I guess if I, if I had to pick or choose, I would pick that book cliffs east. Um, that one's more shovel ready and ready to go. And uh, if we could bring that west project back next year, um, there is a component of that Book Cliffs West. There's a, a large guzzler that I still need about $40,000 for. If, if, if there's a way we could split that up and, and at least get that portion of that Book Cliffs West done, um, um, I sure would appreciate it. <laughs> Daniel, is there any FY20 money we can throw at those Northeast region projects too? Um, potentially, I guess that's up to Pat whether he thinks it would be able to be implemented in fiscal 20 or not. At least by the guzzler, the supplies. 
we've got a new state contract on the guzzler tanks that we should be able to buy them tomorrow if you give us a go on on any of the guzzlers that are on this list we could buy all the tanks by june 30th yeah i think that would be the way to go we could buy a bunch of guzzler tanks right now from boss tanks under that contract we're having a real problem right now getting uh, lumber and supplies for aprons because I guess everyone's remodeling their house right now. So that's been real difficult, but the guzzler tanks, uh, that's a good idea, Gary. We could, we could move forward on those. And, and Pat, I hate to do this to you because I know that book clips committee's done some great work um, and, and made a ton of progress out there. I, I do, I do like the concept though of having additional funding sources out there for next year. So, I don't think I don't think they're both dead per se. I think they're both going to happen. We probably just need to push the brakes on one of them this year. Sure. And and just this now that I've thought about it, some you know we've all, we've already had some commitments on that book list west uh, and have bought some materials. So and um, like I said, I need another forty thousand to get that big guzzler, and that's the one the BLM committed on. So. Um, I would just put that portion of that one project at a priority. And uh, I guess if we had to drop one, it would be the, the East project and then the rest of that West project. But we could probably pay for the guzzler or the tank in FY20 money though, right, Daniel? Potentially, we just want it on that fast track list and we'll discuss all those on Tuesday. Take a look at all of them. There's several others on that list as well. I, I, I'm not trying to muddy the water with additional funding sources, but so, some of those projects with uh, down there on the boulders, um, we, we were asked about internal conservation permit dollars and where we could spend some of those to fill holes and uh i think uh kobe and i committed about five hundred thousand, um and we, we might be able to make up some difference there uh tyler if, if that one's yeah. really on the fence so yeah for sure so where where did we end with this are we gonna are we gonna fund one of the book cliffs projects or just do 40,000 for a tank? I'm not sure I fully understood that. I think we were talking about funding one of them and pushing the tank purchase to 20. So were we gonna fund the east or, or the west? But just to clarify, you guys, I know kind of went back and forth on that one, but if, yeah, if we could get that West one in, I would, I would prefer to like to see that one. So let's cut the funding for the East. Now oh, that breaks my heart too. Justin, you'll be the one talking to the board when they ask, how come you didn't fund that project? I mean, them, I'll just tell them because Eric Edgley can't run a good habitat council and prioritize. <laughs> oh, ouch. <laughs> Boom. I could put Thank this you. down on our contingency list. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, would you please? Because I, I would still love for this one to happen as well. And you never know. They might they might get a turnaround on that water development money and you know, be able to spend it again. So how much of that 92,860 for Brookless West is, is the tanks, Pat? I, I think it's, uh, Three guzzlers. Sorry, I don't have it right in front of me. I should, but so it's about uh, about twenty thousand for the tanks. Well, there it is. About twenty thousand. 
I think if there's three tanks. So if you drop that down to maybe 72. And then expect the 20,000 and change to go for tanks in 20. Looks like on the state contract, those are 5,800 apiece, Pat. So do we just have one source for these tanks or are they gonna be overwhelmed by us all of a sudden at the last minute dropping a bunch of tank orders on them? We just ordered a bunch for some stuff for this fiscal year, and they provided it really quickly. I, we could make some phone phone calls by next Tuesday and, and let you know if we, if that's an idea of how we can free up a bunch of funding. We and they have them sitting there ready. We could definitely spend a bunch of fiscal year twenty money on next year's guzzlers, buying all the tanks right now. Yeah, yeah I like that idea. So let's. Let's uh, sharpen our pencils on that and see see what we can do to, to spend FY20 money on a bunch of tanks. Um, one what? challenge with that is a lot of the guzzlers were funded by sportsmen, so it won't really help out Habitat Council. But <clears throat> Thanks, Allison. Raining on our parade. <laughs> <laughs> the reality police. <laughs> So, Dwayne, I've got a question for you. For that Government Creek PJ, um, you know, you're know, you only about 9,000 in the red for Upland. Do, do we want to mess with those percentages a little bit more, um, take some of that burden off big game and add add a little bit more to Upland game? Um, just to yeah, balance it. So. So yeah. Wrap it up. Do 70-30. What would that look like, Allison? Yep, that puts you about 5% over your budget. Look, look at 60-40, Allison, see what it does. I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay yeah. with that. Eric, I feel bad. You're actually running a great mo meeting. I, I, I didn't mean it. <laughs> I, I, I know you love how I work here. But, you know, it's all good. <laughs> you, you just know how beat up I get at the board anyway, so might as well oh, throw more. Between the board and the leadership team, you know. <laughs> okay. I'm, an easy, I'm an easy target. I think Thousand Lakes probably needs the same treatment that we just that we just did there. It's it's another boulder project, isn't it, Gary? That is right on the bubble. I think it's a it's a high rank, but it's a low scored high rank. Let's switch that to sixty forty, Allison, and let's see what that does. I yeah. think we're getting close to where we can. Over allocate and upland, we're getting close to our line here. Yeah, we're getting we close to my line anyway. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I think we're at the line. Yeah, I'm good. But now, but now we're not at the line for big game. Put <laughs> some more on those same projects for big game, or, or add the book that's water. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. Oh come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just Darren, I'd, I'd add some more to the boulder, and uh, I also agree that that book cliffs water restoration project is pretty important. So, 
just kind of let you. Uh, I would say, man, I just, I just want the livestock guys to pay for some of it. What was that, Tyler? I, I definitely believe those book clips projects are important. I just want the livestock guys to pay for a good portion of them. Well, the difference I see, and um, you guys can disagree with me if you want, but the the book clips we've done a lot of guzzler projects, and they have made great strides over the years to distribute water. And so I see progress being made there. That's why I'm more comfortable funding one and not the other. But on the on the boulders, um, that that's been we've been stagnant there for a long time. And so I would I would just love to see. And Tyler, you're going to have to help us here. I mean, with these numbers, is this enough for WRI to fund it? To fund what? The, the these projects in Southern Utah, like Governor uh, Government Creek, Thousand Lake, and uh, Last Chance. Well, Government Creek's funded now. Thousand Lakes, I still think, needs another half a million dollars or so. Last chance, about the same amount. So, no, those are going to be tough, honestly, unless you come in with a whole bunch of PR and, and ICP money. You know, we can work together there. Well, certainly we'd come in with a bunch of, of ICP. Um, I'd probably have to... I, I don't know where the director's office is going to want to go with PR, but I, I just think those are important. We've we've asked um, Jim to get it aggressive there, and so I, I would love to find any avenue to fund that. No, I agree. I definitely think it's important. And both of those projects are large enough that whatever money you get, we're going to phase it and make it work. So. Well, and the other thing we haven't talked about that might help out Pat's Guzzler projects is – I mean, there might be projects that the sportsman's groups have assigned funding to that won't get fully funded. And that might be a good place to suggest that money get reallocated to. When do we work through those details, Tyler? By the end of the month, first week in June, usually when we get through that. We're kind of slow playing it this year just to see what the legislature does with budgets. Let's add an extra. Let's add an extra fifty thousand in uh, in big game. The last chance in Thousand Lakes. Um, I, I don't know how everybody feels about that, and that's probably not enough to to make it. But it's. I think the more we can do here, the less ICP and PR we're gonna have to come up with in the future. So. And um, I'd say Gary, you know, Gary need to talk to Jim and and be ready for a phone call near the end of the month when we meet to, to talk about, you know, what kind of money you need to put a good phase one together. Yeah. We'll make sure we've got a, a stratified layer. I think there's, they've already got it broken into units. And so we'll just have to put a price tag on each unit and define which units we can actually get. Perfect. Allison, let's put both of those at 50 grand total. So we'll move last chance from 20 to 50 and thousand lake from 30 to 50 and then we'll try to make the big game portion close to 200,000 because the upland game is is probably a little more than people are comfortable with so maybe go 70 30 on thousand lake see what that looks like um yeah something like that Tyler, just, pardon my ignorance, but at, at what point do we go to the director's office on PR stuff? How, do, how does that typically work for us? That happened through the enhancement process. We asked for two. They gave us one, which is pretty typical. They'll usually, they'll usually give us a pretty conservative estimate right now. And then after you guys close and if there's additional funding, we'll kind of do a secondary funding push. And that's kind of the way we've been doing Debra for the last few years anyways, is we do an initial funding list, uh, you know, the, the first part of June, end of May, and then after everybody closes and we realize there's more funding, we'll do a secondary one. Yeah, we've, we've already been talking with Robin and Ashley, and they're, they're queued up to know that there's kind of a, a secondary request coming that, that's, you know, definitely smaller than the first, but it helps us kind of fine tune some of these projects. Um, we just have to make sure that we have our Pencils sharpened, as they put it, to make sure that we're getting all the matching funds correct. And 
and uh, to, to do that PR ask? You know, I, I think if you look at these three projects, we're committing 238,000. Um, that, that's a good percentage given our, our total that, we're, that we have to work with. I think that sends a good message that these are priorities for us. I, I'm pretty comfortable with where we're at with big game and upland game if, if we want to move on. So. Okay. I, I don't know um, how to I guess I had a question for Daniel. When you we left Waterfowl, you, you mentioned that Waterfowl would take care of itself. Is that I'm not sure I understood what was going on there. Um, just the fact that the Clear Lake won. Um, if we fast track Clear Lake, that's going to pull another eleven thousand off of that. It'll also probably pull off some Upland Game stuff as well. Um, so I think there's some of those kind of things that you know are going to probably potentially happen so i think last year we left this one at about thirty thousand in the negative ashley was comfortable with that so just playing around with it those are some of the things that we can play around with if we need to but the only other thing with waterfowl though is you know it, this is currently matched with pr if we didn't get the additional pr or Pick no bottoms. This number would go up. So this one's still at the PR is not solid yet. So we could still do some tweaking on waterfowl if we need to to try to maybe bring this down a little bit. That might be a good thing to do. Okay, we might have to do that. Um, you know, in the coming week or so. Um, I think we're at a good point. Yeah, let's let's move on from this and let's take care of these other things on our agenda. Um, can I interject? Yep. Um, so there are still a couple projects that I have highlighted that we haven't talked about. Um, 5185 Manti LaSalle North Zone Scribe Fire. It has 10,000 assigned to it. Uh, but it's a medium ranked project. Um, so there's that. And then um, the other one is that Huntington Creek restoration project. It's only about half funded right now. Um, and it is also a um, medium ranked project. So when you say medium ranked, you're you're are you are you saying that they're likely to not get funded? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we we need to pull both of those probably. And so, um, Allison, instead of instead of pulling the whole project off, can you just zero out the Habitat Council request? Just type in a zero instead of deleting the whole thing. Um, I've been moving it over to the not approved. Oh, okay. There's that's just fine. another tab, Eric. I'm sorry. All right. That works. No, that's okay. Yeah, so, yeah, let's just pull those and move them over. You know, the other one that we might consider, too, is, is this LaSalle prescribed mm -hmm. fire one. Um, on the carryover list, Tyler, they just entered a new project. And so we currently have this funded with some other sportsman dollars. I kind of anticipate we're probably not going to need this 10,000. This one could probably be pulled as well, in my opinion. You think they're going to withdraw the whole project? Well, fiscal, they have two other phases currently funded. And all they did was add another fiscal 21, but it, they all overlap the same area. And so what they've been doing is just adding a new proposal every year, even though they didn't light the fire off. So oh, really? I think a lot of the funding that's on previous two phases can just be rolled over to this fiscal 21. Okay. That's kind of that. Unless someone from Southeastern has a different opinion. It'll still be funded just with sportsman dollars. Yeah, I think that's fine. I doubt they're going to get that money spent before June 30th, so I imagine it'll be carried over. 
And then is is Paul or um, Drew on about this Huntington Creek one? Do right because right now it's funded with both Blue Ribbon and Habitat Council, and it needs another twenty nine thousand. It's all hundred first percent sport fish, and they are still not ten to fifteen percent over. Do we want to just add that? Would this one fall within any of the fire rehab money, Tyler? What are your thoughts on that? Um, this is from the Swayze fire. Yeah, we could probably sell it as a fire rehab project. I mean, I don't mind, this is Paul, I don't mind adding uh, additional funding to this, especially since we're not over allocated yet. Um, yeah, I say add it to the sport fish column for now, and if we can pull it off as a fire rehab project, if we get fire rehab money, then we'll just switch it out. Uh, I'm okay with that. Um, Drew, if you're on, feel free to provide any sort of thoughts on that. Yeah, I'm fine with that. As I remember, we, we do have a little bit of extra money, but if we can get fire rehab money, that'd be best. Yeah. Okay, looks like we're, are we good then for now? I think so. Let's, uh, let's kind of close this up and, and if, ask for any final questions on this. We need to move ahead and, and we're at 11, almost 11.15. Um, and we've, we've got uh, a project and a habitat management plan. Um, Gary, were you going to present the project for Kendall? There I am. Yeah, I was going to do that for him. Okay. Um, I mean, because we're already kind of looking at project stuff, I, I, I'm kind of proposing to switch the agenda up a little bit, and and let's let's just jump on that since we're kind of already looking at this, these things, and and let's do the project first, fifty-two seventy-eight, and then. Um, let's do uh, the habitat management plan after. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that works for me. Okay. Uh, so with that, uh, let's go on that. Uh, the project 5278 Booby Hole Water Enhancement Project Phase 1. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. Let's start with that like you've got there. Um, as that zooms in, zoom out just a little bit and maybe turn on the land ownership. So just, just to give you an idea of where this sits, this is on the, the Fish Lake Elk Management Unit um, within the Booby Hole CWMU. And as you, you see there, it's a, it's a pipeline project where they're looking to replace and install some new pipeline and then put in five different troughs. Uh, I want to call attention to while you're right there on that map, seeing the, the surrounding forest service land, and that all kind of sits together in, in one big long valley, the Butterfield, Butterfield Meadows that's to the right there. Um, the elk trade back and forth between the CWMU and that Butterfield Meadows country all the time. And so these are, these are elk that are both on the CWMU and off, and it's going to provide a lot of public benefit as well, I guess is the point I'm trying to make. Um, something that if you're familiar with the area and have been down there, all, the elk hunters are very familiar with this area and, and use it a lot. Um, so what they're looking to do, uh, the landowner, uh, at the CWMU has about half the pipe already and looking for some help buying the other half of the pipe and then uh, putting together this uh, a spring development and then moving water all over the allotment to to help spread out the spread out water number one and number two spread out the utilization so that the, the land gets used a lot more evenly and doesn't get hammered in, in the handful of small areas where there is water. Um, Probably go to the, I would go to probably the, I haven't done this for a while. <laughs> yeah, let's look at the images. Um, just kind of the, the spring head there that they have and that they'll, they'll develop and put together, move on to the next one. 
again, just kind of showing the, the capacity and the ability though. They're going to put in a solar pump there as well. So as they develop that, they'll then push the water out to the different areas. Um, and then I think there's some pictures of the troughs as well. Um, those are, that's an existing site they have right now. And then I think the next picture, if I remember right, is the, the style of trough that they're proposing to use. And so I have five of these spread throughout the spread throughout that unit. And then I think you had a picture of the pipe as well. Um, there at the end, big coil of pipe. You've all seen them before. Uh, but the HPPE fusible pipe, uh, put that together. Uh, and if we go to the finance, uh, just talk a little bit about how, how they're going to do it and um, how it is kind of funded. Um, the, the CWMU operator um, definitely is planning to do, do all the install themselves. So there's a lot of in-kind labor. They've got about half the pipe already. And so looking for this part of that pipe. Um, the one thing that has happened with this, uh, and I think part of why we're looking at it today, is it, it was in with that GIP uh, water development funds and funded and moving forward to, to do it. And then that water development fund has been pulled um, with some of the legislative cuts. And so there's about 21,000 right now that is is sitting unfunded, but they're, they are ready to go. And so we were hoping to pull for some fast track funding or something to help them get this going. Um, they are hoping to put it together through the, the end of May and first part of June. So with that, any, any questions or thoughts people have? Daniel, maybe you can weigh in on, I you know you and Kendall have talked specifically about how a, a different funding package other than this GIP proposal, and we haven't changed anything in the database, what would it look like and what are we hoping to do there? Kendall's currently put it on the fiscal 20 fast track list. So that's one we can consider as well for fiscal 20. So I, I believe what we're looking for is just to have a tech council approval. And then if it's approved for that fast track funding, we'll, we'll move forward and get the project done. You know, the other thing we can look at Daniel is if I, this is probably pretty unlikely, but if there's any, of the water development funding that we have in WRI for fiscal year 20 that looks to be left over, we could push it to projects like this and, and Pat's tank purchase as well. Yeah, we can take a look at that. I know a lot of that's kind of going over to UDAF, so we'll have to yeah, they're, see. They're pretty good at spending it. Okay. Um, any other discussion about this project? So we, we will do a motion on this one. Okay, do we have a motion to on to uh, move on this one? I'll make the motion, this is Tyler, to approve it for fast track money in fiscal 20. This is Darren, I'll second that. Okay, we have a... A motion to approve this project for fast track in, in FY20 and a second from, that was from Tyler and a second from Darren. And we'll run through the roll call. Um, Paul Burnett. Yes. Yes. Dwayne. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Darren, you had the second, so we'll go to Justin. Yes. Is he yes? Drew? Yes. Is it yes? Tyler, you made the motion, so uh, the motion carries unanimous, unanimously. All thanks, right. Gary. <clears throat> okay. Thanks, you. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, everybody, on that one. So <clears throat> that was the only project we had to additionally review. Um, and so, Gary, if you want to jump into the um, – Beaver WMA Habitat Management Plan. Uh, we'll move through that. And so we're at 11.20 right now. Um, so af after <clears throat> Gary reviews this, this uh, Habitat Management Plan, we want to discuss um, field tour ideas for the summer and select a date possibly, and just think about our options for that uh, before we end the meeting. So with that, Gary, uh, go ahead with uh, the Habitat Management Plan. All right. Um, looks like Daniel's got it up there on the on the page. 
don't know if you want to start it from the beginning or just go through them one at a time. But, uh, the first slide there just kind of lays out the state code. I think you guys have seen this several times this year already. Um, just kind of lays out the, the why we have WMA management plans and why we're required to do that. Uh, if you go to the next slide. I don't know who's running the computer. As Daniel Eddington is presenting. So can you go to the next slide, Daniel? I suspect he's trying to. He's a very concentrated look on his face. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we can do it that way. Yeah, you can even go to the next one. Go to the one with the Beaver WMA picture, the rest of the stuff you've seen. So, so this is just kind of starts laying it out. This is our Beaver Wildlife Management Area. Um, this is a picture of the North Creek unit. We'll talk about all the units as we move our way through it. Um, but this, this unit is one of our, our best units on the in that area. Uh, has a lot of rich, excellent mule deer and elk winter range. Um, go to the next one. The map that kind of lays out for you what we've got for wildlife management areas there along the beaver front. Um, that North Creek one that you just saw the picture of up there to the north. And then there's an easement piece uh, that's owned by Sportsman for Habitat or SFW. Um, and we manage it as a WMA. And the next one to the south is we call it the Bee Hill unit. And then finally, the, the furthest to the south is the South Creek unit. You go to the next one. So, this WMA takes in about 2,500 acres, um, basically there for a critical winter habitat for big game. Um, two of them were purchased with PR dollars, and one is the easement I talked about, and then the last one, that South Creek, we did land trades with Sitla and private landowners two different times to put that together between 1937 and 2014. Um, big uses there is big game and small game hunting, um, winter range, and then Dustin, you'll see I added trapping there, so trapping is permitted on the WMA. Um, and all those species are, are the most common hunted species. You know, they're elk, turkeys, uh, dusky grouse, morning dove, and cottontail rabbit all definitely get hunted up there. Go to the next one. Okay, so this this is a picture of the the easement piece, uh, which is funny because the Bee Hill is right there, um, and the one to the south we call Bee Hill, but you can't see the Bee Hill from it. So anyway. Funny things in history of the way things get named, but uh, this, this one, the beaver face conservation easement is one that we manage cooperatively with SFW. Go to the next slide. So like we talked about, they're all important for winter range for deer and elk. Um, similar to a lot of our wildlife management areas in Southern Utah, we have that I-15 corridor that is kind of cut our, our units off from their winter range. And so these these WMAs become very important to the, the wintering wintering big game there, um, and then a lot of other uses on top of that. The primary purpose is for that wintering big game, but there's a lot of other wildlife use on those properties. Somebody's cool tent. And then the next slide. So uh, going through uh, unit, unit by unit, like I mentioned, that, that first picture, that North Creek unit, is kind of our, our premier part of the wildlife management area up there. It's in really good condition. The easement unit we consider to be in fair condition, and as well as the Beehill unit. And then that South Creek unit to the very further south, we feel like is in poor condition, and we'll all talk about that as we uh, get a little further on into it. Um, uh, but we've done habitat treatments on all, all four of these units, um, lop and scatter, mastication, done some Dixie harrow back in the day, done some chain harrow more recently. Uh, and then we've done also some plateau uh, to control sheet grass on both uh, North Creek unit and uh, uh, the easement piece. Um, in talking about that South Creek unit that we feel like is in poor condition, it is, uh, it used to be before we got the second land trade uh, to pick up more of it. It was a, a just kind of a small outlier. It wasn't fenced and it was severely overgrazed. Um, then in that Lee K exchange, we picked up the second piece and it became big enough to really kind of put a, our focus on it and pay attention to it. 
And so um, that's all been historically overgrazed, had a, a lot of trouble with cheap grass and many things there. And so we just actually finished uh, putting in that fence all the way around it. And so that's kind of our biggest habitat treatment is to now rest that for a few years and see what it turns into as we, we eliminate that livestock use. So next slide. Uh, yeah, that, that's another angle of that North Creek unit and just kind of shows some of that habitat treatment stuff we've done up in there. You can see the, the mastication and how uh, we also did some chain harrow in this area. Next slide. This is that South Creek unit that we feel like is in poor condition and uh, a picture of part of the fence that we've just recently built. Um, working with the, the adjacent private landowner, this is directly adjacent to an alfalfa field and they have a lot of elk going back and forth right here. So, the entire fence unit isn't fenced with this nice of a fence, but the area where we had a lot of elk going over the top, we, we put in a, a pretty beefy fence there. Next next one. Uh, so access issues, uh, we developed an access management plan uh, to, to work on all these. Uh, all these WMAs are considered open year round to the public, uh, but we categorized the roads into several categories, open roads that are open all the time, seasonally closed roads, and then roads that we need to work toward having being permanently closed. Next slide. Uh, so this is that uh, B Hill unit, the, the third one from the north. Um, again, in fairly good condition and, and one that gets is actually one of the more remote of the of the units, doesn't have a lot of roads on it. The next slides will work through just kind of mapping, kind of show you what we put together for those access management plans. You know, the next one. Um, the North Creek one uh, has one road that is uh, a main thoroughfare that is used year round and then uh, we're able to seasonally close the, the remainder of it and then we want to work toward uh, putting a permanent closure on a road there on that north end. The next slide. Uh, this is that easement piece. Um, again, it has a, a major road that follows the power line that intersects the middle of it um, and then several roads that we're going to work on seasonally closing and then one part one road that we'd like to do a permanent closure in. And then it doesn't show there's a whole lot of on that one. Other uh, just little two tracks, four wheeler trails that um, we didn't, we just opted not to even map. We're just gonna try to have them go away with time. And then the, the next one is that B Hill unit. Um, that's just one road that even crosses it and it's not used very much at all. And we uh, seasonally close that. And then finally that South Creek unit that we just built the fence around um has a couple of uh a main county road that goes through the very north end of it and then two uh, major roads that go through to the, the blm to the south and then we're going to work toward closing one additional one that goes up the middle of it it just feels like there's a lot of redundancy there uh, next slide uh talked about earlier recreational opportunities the game it up and game hunting trapping year-long wildlife viewing uh, most of our WMAs, uh, we allow camping, but we don't promote it. Um, so it's something that happens, but we we don't actively try to encourage people to camp on our property. And then on that easement piece, we hold a youth pheasant hunt with SFW every year. It's really well received in the area. Next one. Another angle uh, looking on that easement piece, uh, seeing that there's some good cover in the first with a, a lot of the other stuff. There was a lot of deer when I took this picture. I've counted close to 50 deer that would have been within that that shot that right took that picture. Next slide. Um, talk about grazing. Uh, we don't graze any of these properties. And now that we've got the fence around the South Creek unit, we don't even trespass graze it in theory. Um, but we do have them all identified as grass bank properties so that we can use them uh, on any given year if there's a wildfire issue or a, a habitat project in, in an adjacent area that we want to work on. Um, if it helps to ease some burdens, we have that there. Um, and then the last one there, last slide is uh, moving forward. Uh, fences and signage, we maintain them annually. Uh, we finished the install of the fence on the South Creek unit, uh, but we do need to work towards uh, getting cattle guards on the major roadways, uh, working with Beaver County on that as we move forward. And then uh, working on decommissioning the roads that have like, been identified as closed. With that, that's the WMA management plan. Justin's given me some comments back already. If anybody else has comments, I'd love to see them and appreciate you taking your few minutes to listen.
Oh, thanks, Gary. I appreciate your efforts here and uh, good work on a, on a good plan. And, and um, these are important things to help us, you know, better focus on, on kind of how we're going to improve these areas and, and let the public know, you know, our purpose in, in owning these. So any other comments right now about this plan for Gary? This is Justin. I just have a quick comment. I, I thought Gary and his staff down there did a great job. Um, it was really clear what, what they had going on and what they were going to do. The only thing I would say, Gary, is on the mapping portion, you may want to consider a bigger map that kind of highlights where this WMA is in relation to the rest of the state. Um, I thought the maps were really zoomed in, and e even the town there isn't really identified as what town it is. And so that might be helpful for anybody looking at this for the first time, trying to figure out where this property even is. And um, yeah. and then the only other comment is there's there's some language in the plan that talks about signage, and it's it says something like we have the majority of the property signed, and it just kind of stops there. And so I wasn't sure if the goal was to have all the property signed over the next two years or, or continual maintenance with that. Um, it, it was just kind of an odd sentence that kind of said. Yeah, the majority of the property is signed, and and that's it. So it's like, oh, are we good? Are we good with that? Or are we, um, you know, is, 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 I guess so, eighty percent is like a B. So um, you yeah. know, I, but anyway, a if you ask your kids this year. So yeah, it's a <laughs> yeah. Um, specific to that, I'll definitely clarify the language and what it what the language is alluding to is there's one small corner on that South Creek unit that would be very expensive to do two cattle guards across that major county road. And so there's a small corner that is essentially fenced out, um, that, but we do have, have posts on the corners identifying ownership, but it's what we're saying in the majority. I'll, I'll, I'll clarify that and make it a, a little more clear that that's what's going on there. Yeah, I, again, very well done. And I love that we identify this as a potential grass bank. I, I, I like that we're transparent about that. So a uh, great job to everybody involved. Thank you. Yeah, really well done. Okay, any other comments? All right. Well, thanks, Gary. I really appreciate you presenting that. Uh, you, you and your team there have done a great job, and and uh, uh, we, we really appreciate uh, all this work. Okay. So with that, we're going to move on to the last thing on our agenda is talking about uh, field tour, possible locations, uh, and dates. Um, I am going to throw out there that that uh, we we from the director's office I, I was advised that we do need to uh, at least consider that the field tour might have to be virtual. But um, I don't know. I think if we work hard to um, you know at least our, our current directive in our division is that when we travel out in doing field work or or out to the field that we, we don't have any more than two people per vehicle. Um, and so, um, I don't know, with that in mind, um, who wants to jump in on their, their ideas for, for a field tour and how we might accomplish that this year? I like the idea. I thought we were talking about going to the boulders. I, I still like the idea of going to the boulders, maybe schedule it a little later in the the year in hopes that we'll be able to actually do it instead of having, you know, four vehicles, maybe we'll have to have like 24 vehicles. <laughs> yeah, that, that might be tough uh, vehicles because everybody's having to socially distance. And so the vehicles are getting checked out heavily and, but yeah, we, we ought to plan for something, and and I, I agree. Let's push it out, you know, maybe later in the in the season. Uh, that hopefully things are are gonna improve on us some more and and, and make it easier. But uh, I don't know. Any other ideas on that? I'd agree with Tyler on that. It'd be good to see some of these projects that we're heavily funding. Uh, it'd be cool to see some of these areas that those are gonna impact. Great, thank you, Darren. Anybody else? August or September in the boulders would be awesome. Okay. Um, so 
My two cents is that sounds good. Dwayne. Sounds good. Yeah, say that again, Dwayne. Okay. Said, that sounds good. Right. The boulders in September, August, September. Uh, this is awesome. Paul. I would shoot. I would shoot more for mid-August, just in case. Oh, depending on what school schedules look like and that sort of thing, uh, being prepared to potentially teach at home again, uh, summer would be better just just for schedule. Okay, I'm looking at calendars, and I don't know. If, you, if we look at mid-August, we could do like – August 19th or 20th. That's a Wednesday and Thursday or Thursday. And that works. This is Gary. I, I will already be officially on the 18th. So staying over on the 19th would be a good fit. Those dates work for me, Eric. Okay. Anybody else? Tyler? I'm good. Dwayne, I'm good. Okay. Cool. So, so Gary, um, I guess getting back to you on that, are, are you saying that that needs to be a, um, a two-day deal, overnight deal, or we hit it all in one day? I think, I think we can. You got to get down there, though. <laughs> It'll be a full day just looking around. So, I think we can do the tour in one day. You might need to think about if you want to come down on, on the 18th and, and already be there, or if you want to start at like 10, 30 in the morning and leave from Salt Lake early. Um, but either way, I'll, I'll be in the area. I know Jim said that he would love to make you Dutch oven. I told him he can't do that because he's going to have to be leaving the tour. So I'll be happy to make the Dutch oven. Who, who's the better cook? Uh, of course I am. Uh, yeah, he was there last okay. time. It seemed like it went over pretty well. So, all right, where would we meet down there? I mean, how far are we talking? If you go to this town of Boulder, it's four hours. Where are we? Go where are we actually going to go? Loa? I think we would start in Loa. Okay. It might make it to the town of Boulder by the end of the tour. Sounds reasonable. Okay, so looking at those dates, um, yeah, so I, I'm thinking, you know, for those of us in, in the northern part of the state, you know, uh, we probably either travel either late Wednesday or early, early Thursday on the 20th. So plan, let's plan the actual tour on the 20th uh, with possible those who want to travel early can come Wednesday afternoon or night and stay the night and and then uh, or others can travel down early Thursday if they want to do that. Does that sound okay? Yeah, I say we we stay in like Tory or something the night before. I can also look at the fish lake cabin schedule and again depending on what the restrictions on stuff like that are at that time. But we can probably put a few people up at the fish lake cabin the night of the nineteenth. Okay, great. Are you thinking camp, camping so there? So we'll look to... At the Fish Lake Cabin, are okay. you thinking camping there like we did at the Book Cliffs? Yeah, it's got about oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine beds in it. Eight of them, four of them being a set of bunk beds and then one kind of a full-size not the queen size, but the next size down. Three, three separate bedrooms. Okay, or we could bring a tent and just sleep outside. Yeah, yeah, it's got a good front lawn that my kid, my kids always sleep on the lawn when we stay there. Sounds like something I'd like to do. Okay, so it looks like we have a tour down to the boulders. And possibly staying in Tory or at the Fish Lake Cabin. 
on the night of the 19th, tour on Thursday the 20th, most of the day. Um, Jim likely will lead the tour. Gary's going to cook. Any other thoughts? Okay. Looks like that seals the deal. It's All right. It's available. So I'll get it reserved. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Looks like we'll have the cabin available. Okay. So, uh, Danny and Daniel, you guys will be able to, uh, I guess, work with Gary to finalize all the information on that. And uh, you guys will be sending out the final information to everybody in the council. Does that sound okay? Yeah, we can do that. Yep, we can do that. Okay. Um, so with that, we have everything done in our agenda. Is anything else that we need to bring up now before this is our final Habitat Council meeting of the season, like we've mentioned? Do, do we need to discuss anything else briefly? It's we're 1141, a little bit early. We've got a little bit of time left if we need to uh, discuss anything else. All right. If not, um, I'm just going to thank again everybody for joining us and being part of the council and um, thank everybody for their time and effort. Thank our tech crew, um, Paul, Mike, Carmen there at DNR for all of their work uh, and everything they do for us. Um, Daniel, Danny, Allison, thanks so much for working on, you know, all the logistics and handling the spreadsheet and really making that happen. Um, you know, you guys are, are awesome uh, making all this stuff happen. And so um, really appreciate all your efforts. Again, thank everybody who are actual who are members of the council and all the work that they've done to be part of this. Um, this is a, we're moving a lot of money around. And one of the things I keep thinking through this difficult time we're in kind of right now, a lot of this money gets pumped out into rural Utah to contractors and, and people staying at hotels and, and eating food. and, and uh, you know, this is good money to boots on the ground work, uh, especially in rural Utah and, and really benefits our state. So, um, and they're good habitat projects. So good job, everybody. And uh, we'll, we'll look to be sending out updates as we move ahead with the rest of the funding work that's going on and as we fine tune that. And as the tour comes together, uh, we'll be communicating with everybody. And so, okay. I think that's it. With that, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. That's Tyler. Okay, we have a motion. Okay. Dwayne, I'll second from Dwayne. Okay. Um, everybody in favor, say yes. 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 Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. And with that, we adjourn our our final Habitat Council meeting of the stays. And so thank you, everybody. Appreciate Thanks, all your everybody. time and effort. Thank you. Thanks.